Hello, this is Sherry Hayes. Welcome. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today I want to show you how you can take a 50 cent composition book and turn it into a workbook for the primary grades. I'm going to be showing all kinds of tips and tricks, so stay tuned. <music> Now I checked online and all the composition books are on sale at Walmart. Okay, so composition books are 50 cents there right now. Now, of course, um, you can purchase these at different places for different prices in different countries. I know that you'll have different prices, but this is something that doesn't seem to be affected that much currently by the current um, inflation, which is wonderful because we all know we're taking a little bite in different areas, aren't we? But God provides, doesn't he? And so you see these composition books, they're very basic. This is a wide ruled composition book. You've probably seen them before, used them before. And uh, it has some spaces here for different things. I like the hardcover ones. I have some soft cover ones, but they're just not as convenient because if you don't have a hard surface that you're writing on, they're kind of flimsy. And so they're, they're kind of cool, you know, but um, you know, you have to have a hard surface for these. They might do good for journaling, I don't know. But anyway, I prefer the hardcover ones. And there are a number of things you can do with the outside of these. Um, one of these is, and I'll show you the one that I'm going to work on today. So these are brand new ones. This is one that um, was partially used, but um, I tore out some pages. So that way, if I mess with this one and do different things, it won't be a waste. It's going to be a waste anyway, right? So uh, what I want to show you is on the outside what you can do. Um, one thing you can find is index cards. Index cards go really well with composition books, the reason being is that if everything is lined, oh, see, there's somebody did a scribble. <laughs> if everything is lined in there, you'll need some blank spaces to draw, right? And so what I do, I'll show you this later what I do with this on the inside, but on the outside, what we're gonna use this for is, see this is kinda ugly right here. Now you might like this, you can recover this if you want to. I usually don't have the extra time. But what I can do is I can take this card and I can label it with the subject or the person's name and I can put it on here such as, um, let me get my marker. So what I have here to use is I have a, th um, a, a thicker, let's see, let me look. I had it in here just a minute ago. <laughs> oh, here it is. Okay. So I have a thicker Sharpie. Now you don't have to use the name brand. You can like use an off brand, the store brand, whatever you want to. But you can take this magic marker and you use the lines on the index card. And um, let me zoom in here if I can, maybe a little bit. Okay, so, and what you can do is, like let's say that I was making this for math, um, or let's say reading, I'll do reading. So I use the lines on the card as my guides as I make the letters on the card and I just you know do it as legibly as I can it doesn't have to be perfect your kids are just gonna love the charm that you wrote it for them and um, here we go there's reading okay so then um, at, after that point I could take some washi tape and I can make it all pretty if I wanted to um, you know there's all kinds of stuff you can do like like if I wanted to I could take this little washi tape and I could like you know put a little thing right here you know, put some stickers around it um, and just make it, just really embellish it up. Then I will put that over here and I will take some clear packing tape. Now this is like the cheapest packing tape you can find and it doesn't really matter whether it's, you know, expensive or cheap. You're just covering this over and putting it in place, right? So now I've got to try to find the beginning of this. I don't know if that ever happens to you. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut a piece that's larger than the um, index card and I'm not going to do this with my tape because no. <laughs> all right. Oh, oh, it's stuck. Okay, it's all right. It's very forgiving. Now, I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to cover the bottom half first and I can just kind of lap this over here and here, you know, however I need to do. And then I'm going to cover the top part. I try to cover the whole thing. Like I said, it's not about perfection. You are making something that's charming, not like 
mass production. This, you know, it, it's homemade and it has that homemade touch and it, and it came from mommy and mommy cares about me and mommy made me something special, right? And when your child is little, they don't have to have the latest and greatest. They just want to know that they're loved, right? So there is reading. See, now I have that. Now, on the spine, what you can do, let's say that you have a number of students or you have a number of subjects, what you can do is you get uh, some washi tape and like you pick a color, either a color for the subject or a color for your child. And you take a little piece of this and you put it on the spine like that. And now when it's stacked up, right, you can see on the spine whose it is or what subject it is just by the coating. Kids love this. And you can get some that a uh, little that's a little more masculine. You can get plain colors of washi tape, right? And if it comes off easily, you can cover it with the tape here and just make sure that it doesn't come off. And there you go, you've identified it. It helps with organization. Now we're going to go to the inside. Now, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of stuff here that is not relevant for a primary student. <laughs> okay. Um, and they've got all, this, this is like for research stuff and it's all gobbledygook anyway. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little phonic sound chart there. See? It has all of this, this a alligator, b beaver, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully. So, I'm going to cut this out and it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to cut it out. And I have this file. I will link it below. It's um, it's a mini office uh, PDF, and it has all kinds of stuff like this. So, whatever book you're making, you can uh, print this out, print on anything that you want out from there, and just cut it to size. It's for mini offices. I guess it's um, it's uh, www.filefolderfun.com. And um, so it's mini office printables. And so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to um, put this. See, they even have like word families if you wanted to put that in there. You can actually even take some of these charts and on different pages, if the, you want your child to um, concentrate, you could cut these out and put them on different pages within the composition book and just do, do exercises with them, like have them copy things, whatever. So then what you can do is you just. Um, put this down. Now, the best thing to put these down with is double-sided tape, but I can't find my double-sided tape. So I'm going to use a glue stick right now. Um, you, you can choose your best adhesive, whatever is available to you, whatever you have on hand, whatever works, right? Glue sticks do not tend to have, to, to have longevity to them, I've noticed. When we used glue sticks on some, because especially if you have your kids glue them in, they don't always do it. Now, you notice I only did it on the corners. You know, and I'm trying to make this as neat as I can. Now, what I can do later, I can go get some contact paper and put it over this. Or I can just leave it like it is. Now, for the contents, now that's all fine and dandy, but what kind of contents do I want to put in? Well, since I have these different sizes of index cards, I think I'm going to make a major part of this page. I'm going to do a sounds book or this portion of the book will be about sounds and I'm going to teach them these different sounds. So, and then we're going to um, do some exercises. I'm assuming that we've already done, gone through some flashcards until they're pretty familiar with these sounds, okay? So I'm going to um, create a page where they're gonna practice some different things about that sound. And what I developed with my little girls is um, I developed you know, see the lines, you can use the lines as guide where to put your card down. So this is the place where they're going to draw. And then down below, I'm going to make some places, we're going to put places for them to trace and copy. Okay, now if you have a small child who's not really, just really practicing their handwriting, um, you'll probably want to do all the drawing with highlighters yourself. I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so above is where, like, okay, so we're going to start with a sound of A. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this marker right here and I am going to um, draw a small A or I can do a big A or I can do both. 
Um, I think I'm just going to do the small A today. So I'm going to do small A. I'm going to draw it nice and big. And what my child will be doing is they will be coloring this and making it into something fun. Okay? So they can make it into a face, they can make it into an animal, they can do whatever they want to. And that will be their drawing. And we'll say, ah, ah, ah. And then we'll say, you can make this into, you make this into an alligator. You make it into an apple. You can, but you don't have to do it just the sound. It can be just something silly. Okay. Then down below that now, then this is when we get into the markering. So I'm going to take, it doesn't have to be yellow. It can be pink. It can be any color. Let's see if I have another color. Um, you can just use a regular marker that's lighter colored. <coughs> oh, <let's see. coughs> well, I guess we're stuck with yellow. So you take this yellow one and you use these wide margin lines for the practice. Now when they're little, it might be harder for them to write smaller, although my kids have never, not had that problem. But you can use two lines for your one line for your to practice at. And you just take your marker, uh-oh, I messed up. <laughs> you just take your marker and draw your A within that, right? And draw a number of them. You can even down here um, maybe make some little words like at. And you can write an or, you know, like that. And then what they do is they'll come back with their pencil and they will trace that, see? And you'll help them and they'll just trace these. See how you've done it? You've made your own little workbook. You see that? So they are then tracing these letters and tracing this word. And it will be kind of halting at first and that's fine. But this is just to introduce this sound. Now, as you go on, then there are other things you can do. Um, one of them being to take, now this is for really young, now I have the lesson book. The lesson book is something that I developed so little kids have a place, it's like a special place for everything to go. This is kind of maybe before they're even ready for that. They're just really not able to do a lot of writing on their own. Um, they're just developing these skills. So if you make a whole series, use every sound in this list, use the short sounds for the vowels, and just make a little book with, and you might only want to put the, um, might only use one-sided, you know, because it kind of gets cumbersome. So one-sided and just go through and make that, right? And then at a certain point, you may want to expand a little bit. Okay, so let's say that we are using uh, this. You could use these, actually. You could put these on a page, and then you, could, you can make different words with them, like I'll show you. You could cut this out, or you could just leave it like this. This will work. And so what you want to do is, like, on one, pa on one side of the page, you put this chart. Um, and you know, this is all the word families. I don't know if you noticed that. Let me show it to you again. Just a second. So this is the word families, if you can read them. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this over here on this page. So what you can do is you put this in here, in your little things. Now, you can have them practice words using that. How can you do that? Well, I'm going to take the first letter, the first um, word family, add, and I'm going to write that right here. Now, I'm going to use, hopefully by this time, the child has a little bit more ability to draw or write. I'm going to write it like that, and I'm going to write it a number of times. Okay, just like that. Now I have a free writing program, a pre-reading program, and it's called To the Top Reading. 
and it has a lot of suggestions, a lot of lists that you can use. It has a lot of these word families in here. I'll show you. This is my printed out version. Um, it has, here's the sounds, um, and it has uh, printable um, cards that actually have these different families and different things. So you could take something from here as well and use these to um, do that with. But I'm just using this for right now. There's a million ways you can go about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going then to make a box right here by each of these. And in that box, a child can use different letters. This is when they're practicing sounding out to make a different word out of these, okay? Um, and you can, you can suggest things, and then you talk about the sounds and what sounds makes that word. Let's see. So, um, like you could say, well, what's an ad word? How about bad? And what is the sound? And they can write it in. And you can say, what about sad? And so they can have fun making words out of the word families. And, you know, you can put a line here. And you can go ahead and do another one. Let's say ag. So we'll put ag here. You know, just continue with this. And you can make another one. And you can do this with all the different word families. And every time you do this, then what you do is you just practice with you say, okay, so let's say these ad, ag, am, you know, help them to sound them out and then just make some some word family pages. And those are fun. And you know what? It's like one cent worth of work, right? All right, and it takes a little bit of time to do these pages, but if you like are sitting down, everybody's watching a show or they're playing outside, you can just do like maybe 10, 10, 15 pages at a time and just have them all ready. Or if you want to do it before you start your school, your school year, then you just go ahead and fill out some of these different things as you think they need them. But sometimes you don't really know what they need. So, but sometimes you don't really know what they need until you're going along and you find out, right? So sometimes it's good to do only about 10 or 15 pages at a time. And so you go through there and you make those up. And then there's also, you can take the McGuffey's Reader. The, this is the Pictorial uh, Eclectic Primer, right? And so you can take this and you can decide that you want to um, have some extra practice. You know, I have the lesson book, and that is a lot of practice too. It's a lot. It's the Charlotte Mason method applied, and you can get those pages for free, or you can order them in book form online, already printed and ready to go. They are very affordably uh, priced, and you can find the links below this video. But if your child is just very, very at the beginning, and they need extra practice, they need extra reinforcement, you can use a composition book to do this. Now, one thing you can do is you can take like, this is the first lesson, is it an ox? You can take each word individually and create a whole page for it. I'll show you. Or at least a whole line or something, half a page or something. Okay, so what you do is you take one of these index cards. Now, you can find the smaller index cards in two different weights. One is really thin, one is thicker. Now for this, you probably want to use the thinner ones, and those are usually what you can find at the Dollar Tree. I think you get a hundred for a dollar twenty-five, is it now, or something like that. Um, but anyway, so I just fold it so I can tell where to cut it. And so I'm going to cut it in half, and I am going to um, I'm going to um, put a glue stick on there, and I'm going to make me. A little place for drawing and I am going to use my lines for guidance and put this little paper right here now I'm going to take the word is to begin with remember that's <laughs> right is it an ox so I'm gonna take this word is and I am going to make a practice area for that word is so I'm going to, it'll reinforce the sounds, it'll reinforce the sounding out, it'll help with handwriting, it's going to be really great. So I'm just going to make two of these, alright, 
Now this is for my child then, and you can see that. This is for my child then to go back and to draw over the word is. And then they can draw a picture and color it for the word is. Now I know for our minds, like, you know, we're older, we're going, I, how do you draw something for the word is? But I tell you what, if you don't give them an impression that it's hard, they will do it. I have my children, they, they know how to draw a picture for is, okay? <laughs> and you can do the it, you can do it down here, then another page you can do and, then you can do ox, and you can just go over this. And this is a way to reinforce and repractice these sounding out skills. Now, in the McGuffey's readers, um, what you'll find is that what they what what we call sounding out, they call spelling. Okay, <laughs> so we think of spelling as saying I S I T N. That's not what they mean by this. They mean sounding out. So it, you would say is, it, an right, and you say slow, say it fast, like is, is, is right. Then you do it, it, it. Right? An, 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 ox, 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 like that. All right? So you're going to do, that's your spelling, okay? <laughs> you're going to do that. And then they have a reading. So after they have practiced all these, practice, 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 and they've written all this, then you can go down in here and do the reading. Now they know what these words are sounded out. I say, it's okay, you don't have to sound it out slow anymore. If you know them, you can just say, is it an ox? And then you just practice and practice and practice. Because I know teaching reading is so intimidating. Trust me, I understand. But really, once you get in a flow, and if you are patient with your child and understand that it's mostly repeating, 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 and going as slow as they need to go and repeating the same things over and over. It's just like a TV ad slogan. After a while, it just gets in there, okay? And okay, so here's another one. So you could take and do another set of pages over, it says spelling these ones. Do we go? Do we go up? So you take these and you put them and you reinforce those. And then you can read with them these words. And so this actually, this first lesson, even though it says lesson one, there's like one, two, three. There's three lessons in here that you can, and it'll take lots of pages in here to go through them. But if you're willing to go slowly and help them, um, and do this along with my free reading program, of course, you know. Um, like you can start doing this about like and we have the sounds and then we have the practicing of these. I'd say that you want to start these McGuffey's lessons probably around part two when they're standing out. Okay, so you would want to use this with part two of my reading program. Okay, and then you would pr proceed with that and just keep and you know you can think of all kinds of cool things to add one thing you can do is you can towards the towards the end when they're doing pretty well see I told you this has been used <laughs> um you can actually create a page where you can like make here's an idea all right or i'm going to use this this bit of tape here so i'm going to um take my pen and i'm going to draw consecutive circles and there are ideas up around about this all over the internet okay um, and what you can do is you can have each one called a different color okay so you can see the circles I make so you can call this one red and just write red and this one can be purple. And this one can be um, blue. And this one can be green. green. Okay, you'll write it better than me. All right. <laughs> and this one, you know, then you can do yellow and you can do it. And then you can have them color each one the color. Like you can even put like the color next to it, red, purple, blue, and gray, and said have them color those together. And then they can be learning their colors and their color words. There's one thing. You could make, um, you could take, 
that one's been dry. <laughs> Turn that one out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put my half card here. And I'm going to put it like maybe over here more. I know it's going to kind of be on the edge, but this is for the drawing part. Then I'm going to make some primary paint, primary lines. And I'm going to use this marker. And I'm going to skip two lines in between. Okay. Um, let me get a fresher one. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to skip two lines and I'm going to make some primary guidelines here. And in between these lines, I'm going to put a line. Remember, we're not looking for perfect, just charming. Okay, so then I'm going to make one here. Now, I'm going to write the word Monday. Here, I got to put a line here. And then I'm going, these lines are going to be for them to copy this word. Now, I could write it with highlighter and then have them trace the original word too, but maybe I'll just write it this time. So I'm going to um, use two lines, and the top line will be for the top half of the word, if you can see. And then I'll make the word Monday. This is for days of the week. and they can copy it down here and down here and down here. And I will teach them that this is the this is the upper upper part. This is the lower part. This is the lower part and then the tails go down here. So like with this one they will they would take their pencil and they would like that. Now you could you could teach them where the name of this word came from or something or you go over it briefly, or you can just talk about how it sounds, or what kind of fun things they like to do on Mondays, whatever. And then they can draw something about Monday here. So see, you've created this whole page, and they can practice it two or three times. You don't want to make it too, you know, cumbersome. And uh, you can do that for a while. You can do two on a page, whatever you need to do. And so that can be another thing you can do with this. And you can do the same thing with numbers and so on and so forth. So when you're done, then, uh, you've got this really cool book. Now see how that licked up right there? I will need to put some clear tape over that real quick. Alright. So there are so many different things that you can do with the composition books for primary grades. You can, oh here's another fun thing to do. Okay, so um, let's say that you have just watched something educational or you've read the story. Like if you read stories to your children, I hope you do. Like if you read uh, the story of Cinderella, let's say. Oh, you can really see my little girl had a great time with this book. <laughs> but let's say that, oh, look at this one. I'm sure you've seen those scribbles before. Okay. But let's say that you've read the story of Cinderella and um, you want to, uh, you know, extend that story and get as much mileage out of it as you can, you know, to just learn different parts of language arts, um, then what you can do is you can take, now believe it or not, they sell index cards this big. Look at that. Okay, so you can take one of these index cards and you can glue it at the top of the page. Oh, that's huge. <laughs> you might you probably have to cut it down. So anyway, so I'll cut this down real quick. And you can glue this up here and on the bottom part you have them dictate to you what the story was about and then you just write it out for them you write it in your own words but in a way that's legible that they can see that it words like once there was a pretty little girl okay and they'll go rattle off a mile a minute so you have to slow down. And then what they do is they just draw a picture about it. Now, alternately, they can make up their own story that you write down and then they draw a picture for it. They love that. So then you're making for them their own little storybook. Or, you know, you could take one of these 
and you could just turn it into a, just like a, a whole bunch, a collection of all kinds of cool things. All right. So those are just some of the cool things you can do. And don't forget that if they do a good job, always have some stickers on hand. You know, like um, you can go to the Dollar Tree and get stickers really cheaply for the primary grades. They'll just have so much fun. And they can sticker up any page they want, and it'll be fun. Or you can um, be more specific and like go to Hobby Lobby and get some really special ones and maybe decorate with them or whatever. But there's all kinds of stuff. Now, um, this is just for the primary grades. You can use these also for the middle grades and the higher grades. And I'd like to show you that too. Maybe next time we can do that. Now I want to give you something more. Okay, so the other day I was grocery shopping. And I'm kind of a feeler and a seer a little bit. And, you know, it's a gift of God. It's nothing I did or anything like that. And it's all under the blood. It's not, I'm not talking about any New Age weird stuff. Okay, this is biblical. <laughs> um, so we, when we come to the Lord Jesus and we give him our heart, he gives us gifts. Or he enlightens or he enlivens the gifts that he's already placed in us. And these gifts, some of them are the gift of perception. And so when I went to the grocery store the other day, I perceived that there was a lot of fear and anxiety. It was just like so, it was just tangible. It was in the air. It was so thick. When people were at the store and they were grocery shopping, they were looking at these prices. And, you know, I'm, I went to a store that isn't frequented like with people, by people that have a lot of money. It was the cheap store, okay? And people were despondent. And, you know, we look on the internet and they say, you know, it's going to get worse. The farmers are warning us. You know, I don't want to repeat it, okay? Now, it may be a true report. Maybe prices are going to go higher even than they are now. Okay? But I want to remind you of something. I want to remind you of the Israelites when they came out of Egypt. Okay? Now, they came out of bondage, and it was horrible bondage. But then, God had to burn out a lot of the evil they had been under, that they had been influenced by, by taking them out into the desert. Now, he did many, 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 many miracles. I mean, he, he, showed, he showed them all the plagues, and he, you know, he, he um, with each plague, he decimated the different gods of Egypt. And he showed them that he was God over, greater than all the gods of Egypt. And he showed them one by one by one, right? And then when they went in the desert, he parted the Red Sea, which is a total miracle. And they went through on dry ground, and they came on the other side. Now they were trapped in the wilderness. And the, the Bible in Psalm 78 says that the Israelites asked this. There were over a million of them, okay? And they're in the wilderness. The wilderness of the Sinai Desert, there's nothing, okay? If there's grass, it's like a boon, right? And there's, I mean, you're walking on rocks. And, you know, things wear out. And the heat, you know, there's, the sun bears down during the day. There's no clouds. There's no rain unless it's a deluge, you know, like once every couple of years, right? And so they're in, and there's nothing. There's nothing to feed them with. That's a million people. What, where are the logistics? Where's the food that came with them? I mean, besides eating all the animals they brought with them, which they kind of need for conveyance, what else did they have? They didn't have any extra clothes. They didn't have any water. They didn't have any of them. And they said, this is what the Bible says that they said, okay? Can God provide for us a table in the wilderness? Okay, so we know our government is totally crazy. There's no one there that has any sense, all right? We know that they've been trying to decimate our farming. They're doing it all over the world. And they're causing, they're, they're attempting to cause food shortages and all kinds of things, right? We know this is true. But that just because it's a true thing doesn't mean, according to facts, doesn't mean it is the truth. It doesn't mean that it is according to faith. Because remember, after the Israelites went to the desert and God kept doing miracles for them, and yes, he did provide for them a table in the wilderness, that same psalm goes on to say that not only did he give them angels' food from heaven, but he also sent so much quail that it was coming out of their noses. <laughs> and God prepared for them over a million souls in the desert. He prepared for them every day a table in the wilderness, a delicious table every day in the wilderness where there was nothing God provided, okay? So that's what we need to be concentrating on because we could be like 
the true but evil report that was given by the spies who went into the land, supposedly they were told it was flowing with milk and honey. And the spies, 10 of the spies came back and they said, oh, it's too big. Oh, they, they were like grasshoppers in their eyes and there's no way and we're so scared and we're never, I don't know why God brought us here because obviously we can't fight those people, right? And it says when they gave the report to, to the Israelites that they cried, men, grown men, bawled their eyes out all night because they were so sad because God put them in a place where now they can't, they, you know, they're scared and everything. But Joshua and Caleb, they st stood up and they said, why, why are you crying? You don't have to, God, if God is for us, who can be against us? They said, these people are praying for us. And they try to remind them of all the things God had done already. And that's what we need to keep in mind for this season. Okay, so we are just about, I mean, we're, I mean, I think we've crossed the Red Sea. I think we're in the wilderness right now, okay? And I think these things that are happening to us are here to test our faith. They're here to burn out a lot of the influences we have had. Because I don't know about you, but if you do any study of the 1960s in particular, how many things hit our culture. We were a country of people who believed in God. Everybody knew that the Bible was true. I mean, if very few exceptions. There were still exceptions. There always are. But by and large, if you if you read books from that area, you, you talk to people who lived during that area uh, era. I'm sorry. Um, the, our country was a Christian country. Not everybody was saved, but every, even if you weren't saved, you knew that you knew that you should serve God and you should fear Him. Okay. And by and large, that's how our country was. Okay. Then they hit us with they um they hit us with the birth control pill in the 60s. That's 1960. Margaret Sanger. Planned Parenthood, remember it. So that ushered in the sexual revolution, okay? Then, of course, we had feminism during that decade. We, they took out prayer in schools. They took out the Bible in schools. They, you, it used to be that when kids, when they got to, to school in the morning, over the loudspeaker, they would pray. I am not kidding you. It really did happen. And so they took all that stuff out, and they... They just fomented, uh, oh, they, 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 they drowned our young people in drugs. It was purposeful, guys. It wasn't on accident. They drowned the kids in drugs. Uh, the LSD experiments that were done by Timothy Leary and his kind in California, that's CIA. I, I mean, I hate to inform you, but our own government was doing it. Those, the operatives in our government that were against God were doing that to us. And it all happened since the 1960s. And here we are. Here we are in the 2010s, I mean the 2020s, and we have had so much of that negative, and pornography, oh, I forgot about pornography. We are dealing with all of these things that they put on us on purpose, and it's the sin of Balaam. I don't know if you've read the Bible, but Balaam was charged of going and cursing the Israelites. He was some kind of a prophet, and he was supposed to pray and curse the Israelites. Well, he went there, and, you know, that's the one where the donkey says, why are you harming me, and because he saw the angel and stuff like that, right? But, but what, this, what Balaam did is he suggested to this king that was trying to get him to curse the Israelites, he says, I can't curse them, God has blessed them. But if you can get them to sin, and you can get them to be unrighteous, then God's curse will be on them. So what did they do? They went and they tried to subvert the Israelites and get them to in sin. And that's how they weakened them. And that's what happened to America in the 60s, guys. They were trying to demoralize us so that we would not be blessed anymore. And the only way, the only way is if we start believing in God, believing in His good report, not the evil report. So it may be true they were trying to do this, all this stuff. But if we humble ourselves and pray and repent and turn to the Lord in this time of uncomfortability, if we, if we know people who are struggling and we can encourage them to do, them to do the same, okay, what's going to happen is it's going to turn things around. And if you love the Lord and you're going through this wilderness, yes, He can prepare for you a table in the wilderness. He can send, you know, when Elijah was at the stream, the brook Cherith, right? What did he do? He sent a raven to give him food, right? And then when he was totally exhausted, he sent angels, you know, after he had, after he, um, Jezebel was chasing him. He sent angels to minister to him. You see, our God is that big. 
that's not the first testament. That's in the Bible. But there are multiple testimonies of people who lived in different times. And God sent birds. He sent animals. He did all kinds of things to take care of his people. And if we are humble and we pray and we trust him, how can we believe that he will not take care of us? That faith is one thing that God does not appreciate. Right? But if we believe God and we expect that he is going to fulfill the word that he has put in his Bible, then we can expect that he's going to provide for us. And if he does not, and if, if, it, if it's in his will that things don't work exactly like we think they should, if we have to do without for his name, you know what? He's going to give us the grace to go through it. And we're not just going to have a nice time. We're going to have a glorious time. I'm thinking here of Paul the Apostle. How close he got to walk with God. How many wonderful things he got to see and be a part of. And he often did with that. But he was willing to do that because of God's kingdom. And God graced him for that. And he'll grace us for whatever we have to face. And we will be the light and the salt of the earth. And people will be drawn to that light. And many will be saved. Just watch. It's going to be glorious. We're living in wonderful, wonderful times. So I hope that blesses you. Have a wonderful day. Like and subscribe. Bye-bye.